everyone, I'm Alana from IGN here with Dave from Gunfire Games, and today we are checking out Darksiders 3. What are we looking at right now? Uh, so this is an area that's fairly early in the game. There is a small sequence before this, but it's uh, um, one of the first areas you come to in the game called Haven. Very pretty. It is. What happened there? That's uh, one of our new abilities. So she, her mind weapon is the whip, and mm -hmm. she can also use it to swing around the environment and grab enemies and that sort of thing. So you saw her use... That's probably the first time in the game you were required to use the whip. Oh, no way. It's cool to see that. So what are we walking into right here? So in Dark Souls 1, there was a character called Ulthane who was one of the makers, and he lived in a little area of the city that was overgrown with trees. Not quite this overgrown, and he's returning in this game. He made you a sword, right? He did, yes. actually. He made the chaos, the master sword or whatever. Yes. Our equivalent of the master <laughs> the sword master is. sword. <laughs> so we're jumping on an elevator here. Yeah. So, this is all really pretty. Yeah. Um, one of the cool things we want to do in the game was to, we didn't want everything to be like horrific and destroyed. Mm -hmm. And uh, the old thing kind of presented a good opportunity for that where his area of the city is being protected from the demons and all the stuff that's happening in the apocalypse. And because of that, it's the influence of the makers in general is that they make things kind of pretty and grow. So yeah. kind of him just being here makes this area of the city overgrown and lush and beautiful. What a nice guy. Yeah, it's, it's <laughs> kind of a good service they provide. I feel like this is a lot greener than uh, some of the areas in Dark Souls 1 and 2. Yeah, we wanted to have a lot more contrast visually. Like a lot of stuff in Dark Souls was very brown and dark and dreary. And mm -hmm. we wanted to have areas that were more lush. And, you know, we, we really just wanted to expand the palette of, mm -hmm. of colors and stuff like that within the game. So we're seeing her get into some combat here. That's a cool flip. Yeah, this is her primary weapon, so she uses the whip for... Um, she'll have other weapons in the game, which, you know, at some point will show off, but her primary weapon is her whip, so mm -hmm. she can flip around. She has a lot of the same basic um, combo you would expect from a Darksiders game. Mm -hmm. She's got rhythm moves, she's got air attacks and juggles and all that kind of stuff, so it's, she's got a pretty expansive uh, combat repertoire. It's going to be uh, upgradable? Yep, you can upgrade the whip, it can, you know, does more damage, you can unlock new abilities and stuff, or new moves and, and combo moves and stuff like that, mm -hmm. similar to the past games. I, yeah, this looks really quick. Yep, and she's, uh, it's actually, it's funny, because death was, like, super fast. That guy yes. was, like, so she's probably somewhere between war and death as mm -hmm. far as the quickness of her combat. Oh, that was cool. Yeah, some of these moves are, because she's kind of, like, she's supposed to be a mage, and so some of these moves are supposed to be a little more magical in, yeah. in, in origin and it comes into play a lot more with some of her secondary weapons but yeah. a little bit with her whip and I really love how uh, flowy her hair is actually her hair is a big part of her character like we wanted something identifiable about her that was um, uniquely hers like death had his mask war yeah. had like I don't know everything basically <laughs> um, and hers was the hair so and you see it a lot in the promo which is like it really um, draws her hair and her hair actually changes based on her abilities in the game. Yeah, it looked like it kind of happened in combat. It was flaring up more, and then when she was out of combat, it sort of died down. It doesn't actually obey the laws of physics, so right. yeah, it's, it's, you know, <laughs> it's going all over the place, and depending on what she's doing, it has it can do whatever it wants, basically. Who needs half physics? Exactly. <laughs> so what's, what's going on here? We're in some kind of Old, so we are on Earth, clearly. This is some kind of old station or something? Yeah, so the one of the, the primary um, antagonists in the game are the Seven Deadly Sins, and so each sin has its own unique area. This is one of this is the first slit sin you encounter in the game, mm -hmm. Sloth, um, and he's kind of a bug-like creature that lives in the sewers. We call it an area of the game called the Nether, and it's mm -hmm. kind of like sewer, subway, anything beneath the city. Okay, interesting. And they all have an influence on their quote-unquote realm. So here he's kind of like taken... We go with this idea that they're terraforming Earth, so... The area he's in, he's terraforming now, and it's all bug-ridden. There's, like, webs on the walls and weird egg sacs and all that sort of stuff. So to not get too deep into story stuff, um, where were the Sins in the other two games? Or why are we just fighting them now? The Sins are, like, these really powerful beings that the horsemen actually killed and imprisoned. Mm -hmm. And they, you know, they've been in prison for who knows how long. Could have been thousands of years. It doesn't really matter. And uh, the events of the apocalypse afforded them the ability to escape. And this is all okay. revealed in, like, the first, like, 30 seconds okay. of the game. So I'm not, like, spoiling anything. Yep. So. Fury was is basically sent to Earth to take down the seven deadly sins and put them back in prison. That sounds hard. Yes, it is very, <laughs> especially since it took all four of them the first time to do it. Yeah, right. So it's just her and the seven of them. And so the idea is being that each environment, if you know, we're seeing bugs here, that there's seven different distinct kind of environments. Yeah, and the idea is one. that yeah, exactly. We wanted to theme the game around the sin. So every time you go to a new area, the enemies, the puzzles, the the environment, it's all kind of themed around that sin. Mm -hmm. and, ultimately it culminates in a boss fight with them. Right. And uh, we've seen some enemies here. How many new enemies are in the game? 
Uh, there's a lot of new enemies. We, we brought a few back from Darksiders 1 and 2, as it yeah. made sense. For example, the Phantom Guard are on Earth, like, building the destroyers. This guy's not new, right? Yeah. No, the, this guy's new. He all is the, new, okay. All the guys in this area actually are new. Oh, no way. There was a Phantom Guard earlier in the city that was from the past games, uh-huh. but... Uh, Especially when you get into the sin areas, most of the enemies in those areas are unique because they're kind of themed to that sin. Yeah. Sin, and we didn't have those in the past games. Yeah, and I, I also really like the lighting in here. There's all these, uh, what are the, the blue things? Are those eggs? Yeah, those are sort of the egg sacks. It's pretty cool if you look at them closely. There's, like, stuff squirming under the surface. It's well, that makes gross. me like them slightly less. <laughs> I was sold on it until you said that, and now it's gross. <laughs> so we're seeing a creepy hallway here. Um... You know, I've seen this before, and it totally makes me think of Kronos, which is uh, one of the last games that you guys made um, on Oculus. So it's yep. like it looks like there's been a lot of different inspirations. You've got, you know, what you've worked on from Kronos, the original games, and all of the things that have happened between Darksiders two and three. It all kind of like pieced together to make this one huge thing. Sure. Yeah, I think one of the cool things about for me about the Darksiders franchise is that like juxt- juxtaposition of like the werewolf and fantasy. Like, yeah. I like seeing. Like, I loved the Goonies when I was a kid, which is, like, mm-hmm. one of my favorite mm-hmm. movies, because I like, hey, there's a pirate ship in the cave. That's badass. <laughs> and so I always like the idea that, like, hey, there's something cool and interesting in the real world. And Darkstar is, like, the ultimate manifestation of that. Yeah, hey, I there's, mean, a seven, there's one of the seven deadly sins in the sewer, because, of course, there is, and that's awesome. Where else would he be? <laughs> but, yeah, it's cool. We're literally in a subway right now. Yep. Ooh, who's this? So this is one of the, like, an introduction of one of the early uh, puzzle mechanics. We have these little bombs in the other Dark Stars you can pick up and throw. Yeah. So in this game, they're bugs. So they kind of have their own behavior. They Explodes walk around. Himself. They'll fly around in different circumstances. This is obviously, like, the most basic version where he yeah. blows a hole in the floor. But we build upon those mechanics as you play through the game. So this is, like, kind of an introduction to that mechanic? Exactly, yeah. That would be the first time you saw the bug. Ooh, what's this guy doing? That's one of those guys just hanging from the ceiling. That one, seems fun. Yeah, I mean, why not? <laughs> what else are you going to do? <laughs> just hanging out in the subway? Maybe I'll just hang on the ceiling. What <laughs> exactly. else is that? Everyone's kind of dead. One other cool thing we're doing is we're not really doing, like, the combat room thing where you walk in the room and the door's shut. Yeah. Um, so we're trying to think of more organic ways to introduce enemies. And we're doing our best to make it feel like, hey, these guys have a purpose in the world. Those guys are sleeping. You might run across some other bugs eating some food on the ground. Or, yeah, so they aren't just there to wait for the player. Exactly, and then yeah. Them. Yeah, it's a good idea. It's so, always weird when you walk in a game and there's just, like, three guys just wandering around in, like, a random pattern. Like, why are they doing that? Suddenly they cue yeah. you and they'll just run at yeah, you. That doesn't exactly. make any sense. Ooh. You can see the, this, this fat guy in the background here now. Yeah, so that's Sloth cool. just kind of chilling out on a stone waiting for you. And we don't Being actually, lazy. Yeah, we don't have the cutscenes in yet, so you won't see okay. that. But he'll have his own dialogue and cool introduction to him. And But you get to see the fight, which is What's he going to sound like? Uh, he's kind of laissez-faire because he's Sloth. So he, yeah. he's one of the... It's funny because when he talks about the apocalypse and stuff, he's like, whatever, who cares? Yeah. Like, he doesn't really care what's happening. He just wants to nap. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> he's got his little bugs that carry him around, and he's cool with that. And Lord of the Flies. It's cool. We try to, like, um, really play up the aspect of the sin. In this case, he's lazy, obviously, so he has these other bugs kind of carry him around on his throne while he tries to attack you. Ugh. Because of why walk for yourself when other people can? God, it seems just... Like, it would be so awful to actually be there. I'm glad it's Fury and not me. Oh, yeah, you know Sloth stinks. <laughs> yeah, there's no way he yeah, smells that good. That guy does not bathe himself, no. I guarantee. <laughs> no. I like oh, how when him. he's sitting on his throne, he's just kind of idly scratching his yeah, stomach. Yeah, yeah. And again, Mark, we want to portray the fact that he's just kind of bored of your... <laughs> and it comes across in the cutscene where he's like, why are you here? Why are you bothering me? You're Leave just me a alone. minor inconvenience. Yeah, I'm just down here, like, chillaxing. Well, each of them would know who the horsemen are, though, right? Oh, they know, because you put them in prison. Yeah. So they have some animosity. Towards yeah. you. You're basically the jail- the jailer or the cop coming back to yep. get these guys and put them back yep. in prison. So. Oh, it looks like he does a lot of damage. Yeah, these they're pre- the sins are pretty tough, and I you uh, looks like we're gonna die here. <laughs> R.I.P. You just like hit us twice. Oh man, that's crazy. We also have this tradition where the first boss in all our games is like super hard. Like I don't know if you remember. Uh, the Bat Queen I from do. Dark Side that fight took me a long time. Yeah. <laughs> it wasn't on purpose, but... Yeah, she was tough. Who was the first boss in uh, 2? Um, they, I guess the first technical... There was like a little... The first major boss was the Guardian, the big statue thing. Right. But there was like minor bosses in all the first little dungeons. Yeah. Like the weird egg rolly one where you had to throw the eggs at it to hit it. Yeah. Um, and I mean, they are pretty tough games. Like I played the first Darksiders on the hardest difficulty and it kicked my butt. 
Uh, in terms of difficulty, do you think this, the combat in this one is is harder or? It's probably on par. Like hard would probably be equivalent to hard in the other games. Yeah. I think probably the biggest difference, and you may have seen some of this coming through, is that you're not fighting as many enemies. Yeah. So I think if you approach it in a one-on-one basis, it is harder. Mm-hmm. And that's going to be the first thing you're like, wow, this one creature is way harder than one creature in any okay. other Darksiders. Yeah. So again, less about being mobbed, more about exactly calculated. Ooh, what happened here? So you finally killed the bugs underneath the throne, and it they kind of fell down. I mean, now he's pissed. So now, God. now he's really mad because he's actually got to do something. He sure is gross. <laughs> oh, look at that stomach! And even though he's sloth, he's still a badass. Like they're yeah. not they're not wusses. Like he can move if he absolutely has to. So at this <laughs> point, he's just mad, and he's going to start coming at you with everything he's got. He's going Hulk. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Man, that stomach animation is so unsettling. Just like ugh. It's so bouncy. If you look closely, he's got like a bunch of sores down there too. I did see clearly that. Clearly doesn't move that up. Ugh. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> no, this makes me excited to see what uh, all the others look like though. Because they, they seem to be like, your take on the Deadly Sins doesn't seem to be exactly what we would expect from those exactly. traditionally. So. In the same way we kind of switched up the Horseman, because I think in like traditional Horseman lore, Fury's got a scale or something weird, and she's like, bring out the barley, and the, I don't know, it doesn't... Yeah. Clearly we didn't follow the it's reference. What, what is it? It's like <laughs> Pestilence as yes, well? Yes, exactly. Yeah. They even have different names. So we're doing the similar treatment with the Sins, where it's like, in this case we are actually using the names, but we're completely changing what it means to be one of the Sins. Right. I mean, I'm pretty sure no one imagined it as a big fat bug. So. No, but he does look good. <laughs> and yeah, this this looks hard. Like, I'm glad I'm not playing right now because uh, I think that we would have failed numerous times. Yeah, you'll probably die on this boss a couple times before you. That's good though. It's yeah. a good, good amount. We of want challenge. you to feel like you could succeeded at something when you actually kill one of the sins. Yeah, and you feel like you earned it. Yeah, like if you just walked up and killed him first try, you'd be like, all right. All right, well, time to pack I it guess up. Yes, that was a deadly sin. <laughs> <laughs> deadly in quotations. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I really like his wings as well. Does he actually fly, or is that for his jumping? He'll do, like, a leap move. He couldn't okay. sustain fly. He's pretty fast. Yeah, he's just too lazy. There we go. Yeah, yeah, that's cool. So the bugs have stopped spawning at this point? He killed them all, yeah. Oh, he killed them? Yeah, when he came out, he started swatting them with his, his mace. Not on purpose, just they were just there. They just happened to be really around. Care. Jack move, man. <laughs> all right, I guess we'll wait till we finish him off. But, uh, so this is the first boss fight? This is the first yes. sin you kill, yeah. Okay, so it's not necessarily... You're not it's necessarily not necessarily the out. first boss fight, but okay. it is the first deadly sin you encounter. All right. And then that means there's six more. There are six more, yes. Oh, there we go. Got him. And that's it. He's dead. R.I.P. Fades into dust. <laughs> All right. Thank you so much. Yeah, no problem. Thank more you. More on Darksiders 3. Stay right here on IGN. So those are all the little details about this Darksiders 3 gameplay reveal. If you like that, be sure to check out the announcement trailer and our mini documentary on how the game came to be. And wherever you are, be sure to subscribe to IGN.